Let's look at this example. We have Newton's law of gravitation, and if we have two objects with masses of 10 kg and 50 kg respectively, we want to model the gravitational force between them when the distance between them changes from one micrometer to about 0.1 millimeter, and we're going to plot the calculation. So basically, we are doing a so-called theoretical modeling. So I have put in these two input values. These are the two masses of our objects in kilogram, and this is the gravitational constant that we're going to use in calculation. So now what we're going to do is to pick a bunch of R value in the unit of meter. The reason why I pick meter is because in this equation, uh, it's easier to do all the calculation using the SI coherent units, and meter is a coherent unit. And then we know that the first R value should be from one micrometer. And then we should have 20 of them, and then we should end at 0 0.1 millimeter. Okay, So one micrometer equals to 1 e to the negative 6 power um, meter. And then we're going to calculate our force in the unit of Newton using this equation, this Newton's law of gravitation. So we can calculate our very first one, and that equals to g f4, making it uh, absolute address times this again, f4 times this right here, and then divided by this one right here. So this one right here should be f4 as well. And then this one right here raised to the second power. So that's about 33,000 Newton. Okay. So as you can see, it's actually very big gravitational force when the distance between the two objects is extremely small. Now, the question is, how am I going to fill in the rest of my R values? Don't forget, I need overall 20 of them. And how am I supposed to space that out? So let me pick a step. Now, the first step I want to pick, so I'm just going to do some calculation here, is a linear distribution of the distance from 1 micrometer to 0 0.1 millimeter, which means that I need 20 of them. That's 19 spacing. Therefore, I have the largest distance is 0 0.1 millimeter, that is 1 e negative 4 meter, minus the smallest one, 1 e negative 6, that's the 1 micrometer, divided by 19. Remember, we have 19 um, spaces. Therefore, the next R value equals to the previous value plus the step size, make it F4. And then I'm just going to copy and paste. Need two more. And as you, keep, you can see here, I have one 0 0.1 millimeter. And these are my 20 data points. They are linearly spaced out. And I can copy and paste my formula. And then I can plot my graph. Which, as you can see, is actually not a very good graph. What happens is I have a huge drop in the force in the initial several data points. However, for the rest of my graph, I cannot see any change. I just see a straight line. There's no change to be observed from this graph. So this is not the best way to graph it. Let's keep it here. Let me give it a, a title. Just call it, I'm just going to call it linear spacing. So let me just keep it here. And then I need to think, is there a better way to improve on my graph? Even though I did the right thing, this is not the best outcome because this graph is not very informative. So how can I improve upon that? Maybe a logarithmic graph is a better representation of my model. So I realized that here, my lower limit of the, rate of the distance is 10 to the negative 6 power meter. So if I take the logarithmic of it, calling the building function, 
if you only put one argument by default, the base is 10. So that equals to negative 6. And if I copy and paste this to my upper limit, and that's negative 4. Maybe I want to evenly space out the exponents of 10 instead of the actual distance. Therefore, this one right here, I'm going to call it my linear step. And now I'm going to have a log step. And the log step equals to calculate it the same way. My upper limit is now negative 4 minus lower limit negative 6 divided by, again, 19, because I want 20 data points. So there are 19 spaces. And this is my new step. Therefore, this becomes this plus this right here, absolute, and then just copy and paste. And then my R and F needs to be determined through calculation. So now this equals to the exponential value 10 raised to this much power. Copy and paste. So again, I start with 10 to the negative 6 power, and I end up with 10 to the negative 4th power. And then I'm going to copy and paste the, the formula over. And now I'm going to plot my graph. So this current graph has already improved over the previous one. At least it looks like a curve, and I can see this smooth change in this corner. But this is still not good enough. I want to make it into a logarithmic plot, or to be more precise, a semi-log plot, because I don't need to change this to the logarithmic scale. I only need to change the x-axis to logarithmic scale. Therefore, let me just double click on the x-axis here, and I have several uh, access formatting option. So in this case, I'm going to change the display unit uh, into a logarithmic scale with a base of 10. That's by default. You can change the base as well if you want to. Okay, so as you can see now, my x-axis has changed from, again, 10 to the negative 6 power, but all the way to 1. I don't need that. So let me change the maximum value to 1 e negative 4. So this is what I want, my semi-log plot. Of course, you can graph a log-log plot by changing the vertical axis into logarithmic scale as well. But I don't need that for this application. I have put in the appropriate axis titles as well as the chart title. Um, I can move this to the left as well. For that, I'm going to right uh, double-click my axis, horizontal axis. And here, under the axis options, I am going to determine the where my vertical axis would cross my horizontal axis. Right now, it's automatic, but I want it to cross it at the lowest value, which is 10 to the negative 6 power. So now, as you can see, that has been moved over here. So this is the theoretical modeling of the gravitational force between two objects as the distance between them changes, increases, according to Newton's law of gravitation. So you can see this graph is a better representation than the previous one. This shows the advantage of plotting a log plot instead of your normal linear plot.